New York, I love you, but you're bringing me down. One of my all-time favourite scenes from Mad Men and the subject of this video is a simple, not really that plot important scene where Don and Joan just talk in a bar. This scene comes at the end of season 5. Don is happily married to Megan at this point, for context on where his character was at, at the time, and Joan just had a blow up at work because she was served with divorce papers from her rapist turned Vietnam soldier ex-husband. Well soon to be ex-husband. This scene happens right after that as Don has taken her to a bar to relax and calm down a little bit. That's the premise for this scene. And it's in these indiscriminate, careless moments in Mad Men that the show is at its best because the character writing is that strong. This scene truly is one that stands out to me in all of Mad Men as one very unique and great characterizing moment for both Joan and Don as characters. This scene is not only a rarity due to the honesty embodied by both characters, but it also has so many subtle subtextual implications as well as nearly everything does in Mad Men. So I'd like to explore why this simple characterization of Joan and Don sitting and talking in a bar is so great. If you look at the overall picture with these two characters, by the time we make it to this bar, they have both changed quite a bit since we first met them in the pilot. And this is one of the strongest subtextual undertones in this scene. Don and Joan were both once presented as the pinnacles of femininity and masculinity, especially towards the beginning of the series. They were almost effectively the same character, just on the opposite ends of the gender spectrum. That's also why, funnily enough, even though this scene slightly teases it at points, and theoretically they would make the perfect couple, they never dated or hooked up throughout the series. They could see through each other. They both both created these personas of perfection in their gender roles. Don was the tall, handsome, confident, smart, successful, rich businessman, and Joan was the beautiful, polite, curvy, submissive, intelligent, sexual woman. Don Draper was every woman's fantasy, and Joan was every man's fantasy. Don is what men wanted to be, and Joan is what women wanted to be. The alpha male and the alpha female. But the whole point is that both of these personas they created to be successful didn't lead to happiness for either of them. These two confident projections of masculinity and femininity are fake. This is critically important to understanding their relationship and the genius characterization of this scene. These two embodied the societal expectations of their genders by creating personas that they thought were supposed to lead them to happiness, but it didn't. Don became successful and rich and climbed the corporate ladder, went from rags to riches and married the model, but it didn't bring him happiness. Joan became beautiful and pampered herself. She manipulated the social and corporate ladders and landed the to be rich and handsome doctor husband and got married became a housewife and had a child but it didn't bring her happiness this thematically is the show explaining that the golden age of america's nuclear family was bullshit and didn't actually lead to happiness happiness whatever it is and if it exists comes from something else rather than meeting societal expectations and hoping to have happiness as a byproduct in this scene in the bar they are both post failure in this regard both divorced both hurting from the past don and joan understand that they both tried the same thing and failed. This is why this scene is so unique and interesting, because it is the two of them having a rare honest moment of understanding together since they relate to each other so much because effectively they are the same character. Honesty is a rare thing in Mad Men, especially with Don and Joan, because of those fake exteriors we were just talking about. But here, they are honest with each other, they allow each other to be vulnerable in this safe space between the two of them. And this is epitomized by the framing and presentation of both characters in this scene. Joan's hair is a little disheveled, she's not concerned about looking perfect in this moment, and tall, masculine, confident Don Draper in this scene is always framed smaller than Joan, playing with the power dynamic here between the two characters. He's slouching in his chair and wearing his hat awkwardly and going red in the face from drinking too much. He's not in control here, and we know Don is a control freak. We aren't seeing the pinnacles of masculinity and femininity here. We are seeing the damaged people behind those personas, legitimately relating to each other. Don, in a very atypical masculine fashion, even admits here that he never sent Joan flowers or tried to hit on her when he first started working at Sterling Cooper because he was intimidated by her. But no flowers from you. You scared the shit out of me. And obviously the flower motif comes back at the end of the scene later in the episode where Don finally sends some friendly flowers to Joan while she's at the office, bringing everything full circle. But the power dynamic thing here is important, because the admittance that Joan used to intimidate Don is very telling. 
Women like Joan will always intimidate men, especially men like Don Draper. But that's the whole point of this scene. These two titans of masculinity and femininity that we as the audience and the show used to put on this pedestal as perfect have the exact same problems as the rest of us, because ultimately they are just normal people. This scene is just two characters, two people, hurt by the world and their past, licking each other's wounds for an evening before going back and slipping into character. They both have insecurities and are never allowed to or feel comfortable being themselves. They try to fit into societal conventions, only to fail. They have marriage troubles and troubles at work. Again, ultimately, they are just normal people, the same as everybody else. This subtext is what makes this scene so interesting, and why I asked you to watch this scene immediately before watching this video. Because this video really isn't that much about this scene, rather than these two characters and how similar they are, and how this scene is the corroboration of how similar they are, and how all this subtext is subtly portrayed through the characterization and presentation of these two characters. And this consistent depth and level of character writing throughout its seven seasons is why Mad Men is one of the greatest television shows of all time, because of scenes like this. Support links in the description below. Thanks.